lot of Pakistani, and I, and I spoke about this in Urdu, ended up ranting on for a while because it's very important to talk about this because it is a common, common occurrence. And you, Nuria, would also understand that. You, I know you a little bit. There's still a little bit of Pakistani in you through affiliation or, or, or knowing the culture. That I remember a while ago there was this there was this photo that went viral. This is like 2009, 10 or 11 maybe. Um, and even before that, I think on YouTube, there was this woman who kicked the Quran and she was turned into a half serpent or something. And monkey or something. Was yeah, it? monkey. It was, a, it was a weird looking creature, whatever it was. Yeah. And it was being like, yeah, yeah. People believed in that legitimately. So people mm. believe in that kind of thing. Uh, because again, it's the dogma. But and when an ordinary person does it, but ordinary people start believing that, it must be coming from somewhere, yeah? yeah. So have a look at this. Uh, I'll translate that for you. So this is one of, the, this is a huge YouTube channel. I think it's got 2 million followers or something, Message TV. They are celebrating. They are so happy promoting, um, and, and t talking about the death of, this Lars, uh, I think, what's his name? Uh, this, the, the, I think it was a Danish cartoonist. Cartoonist, yeah. Yeah, I, I, Lars Vilks, I think his name was, and I, and, and he drew he 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 drew a dog, and then he put a Muslim Arab looking man, and then he called him Muhammad. So, um, and he he did that in two thousand five or something, and then he's been under police custody ever since. Mm -hmm. And he recently i think four or five days ago he was killed in a car accident while in the police custody so pakistanis muslims so and it's not just pakistan and everyone that they're just loving it they're like look at him got destroyed i shared that earlier Kikachu was also <sighs> um celebrating joking about it oh you must have misunderstood the meaning of drive through um it, they were saying that there was a base truck driver the truck driver basically he had a collision with a with a um, with a truck, and uh, he drew the prophet as a dog, but died a worse death than a dog's crushed like a bug while in a police protection. If protection is not written for you, no army written for you, meaning if God is not giving you protection, no army police in the world can save you, etc. So they openly, openly celebrating that, um, and Pakistanis are so happy. Look at this. This is a news, actual newspaper clipping. So the uh, the 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 cursed man who drew prophet muhammad uh badly uh, died um burnt alive or some something like that it's hard to does it actually that. say so, the cursed man in yeah, yeah maloon maloon yeah maloon means cursed man yeah oh my god the cursed days. man who drew prophet muhammad and uh, died by burning um and then on the other hand someone actually compared that which is funny like i think i picked it up on twitter or something on the right, you see the remains of General Ziaul Haq. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you. Know. you about that. <gasps> yeah, oh. so he died. He died, uh, arguably or actually unarguably, Pakistan's most Islamist dictator or a politician. He wasn't a politician; he was a military dictator. Was General Ziaul Haq? He was president of Pakistan from 1979 till 88, until when his plane, uh, when he died in a plane crash. And that's all was remain. These are his remains on the right. So they only survived. I don't know if it's the actual one, but it is. It's common knowledge that only his jaw survived um, in that plane crash. So, so somebody drew a comparison that okay, well, if dying uh, by uh, by fire is um, is evil, curse of death, then what about your president? And and now again, I I we don't want to share that. We don't talk about that, but. It's important to tell these people that where do they get these ideas from? Why did and I've said it before that you know no matter how I die, whenever I die, these guys will be saying the same thing. Oh, he died a horrible death. Oh, Allah took his revenge. Oh, and, and, yeah, in the, in apparently this, Allah uses normal means like a truck. In this case, Allah may use that truck to go boom and kill this guy. Like whatever happens to you, they'll say it was Allah <laughs> behind it. And, and he had to wait 14 just... years, apparently. And he was, yeah. uh, how how um, how old? Uh, so Prophet Muhammad died at the age of 62. This guy was 72 or something. He lived longer than Muhammad. He, he, it took Allah to find a truck driver 
And obviously, the applications were open <laughs> for the last 15 years or something. And I finally have played. I was hiring. We did, did say Allah's that, hiring. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Allah is hiring. Allah is always hiring. And Salman Rushdie is still alive, hopefully, and stays alive for a long, long time. But then this is the same attitude religious people use all the time. So have a look at this one. Now, again, I'm only using that for, to defeat their own argument. Isn't this a horrible death? Look at this. He, Ahmed Didat, he, now this is what Christians were using that for so long. And uh, they, they, they use this um, biblical verse saying, uh, I, I think this is not the right video. I think. There was one, this one, I don't think. So anyway, so these are the last days. And Christians use this. I, I can't find the exact video, but they use it. He was, he was in agony. He was in pain. And I think he was like this for five years. And coincidentally, he had one of these debates with someone. And he said that if I'm a liar, then Allah may give me painful death or something like that. And then very soon afterwards, he, he, he fell sick like that. And he stayed like this for five years. And Christians have been using that. Look. He lied and the, the true God has spoken. So they do the same thing as well. Um, what about what about this? And, and you and I, I, th I think you were a fan of him as well. Um, uh, I, I, I still am. I, 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 I almost cried when he when he died. Um, Junaid Jamshed, Pakistani pop yeah. icon. And he yeah. had become a religious figure. Uh, and uh, let, let, let me show you his photos when he was a pop star. Younger days. So, so he was a he, he was a pop icon, and he came up with some really really good songs. And then he became um, a, a preacher again, a, a very nice way, not not in a not in a nasty way, in a nice way. So he he died unfortunately. In a car, in a plane crash, and he was on his way to some religious gathering or something, or or, or some uh, religious preacher or something. So and, is that Jinnah Jamshed's plane crash? You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, th this is not the actual photo, obviously, but but that's yeah. the plane crash. That's the actual plane crash. Nobody mm. survived. I think forty-four people died. They're all burnt alive, including Jinnah Jamshed and forty-three other Muslims. So if you if you're going to claim that death by burning or death by fire is is Allah's revenge? Then what? How would you justify these? How how many people die in Pakistan in in, in uh, car accidents? Car accident. Okay, so have a look at this. The nearly thirty thousand people died in car accidents in Pakistan, which is quite a lot, which is two point two, which is two point four percent of all of total deaths in twenty eighteen. Thirty thousand Pakistanis died in car accident. Some of them would have been burnt alive. Some of them, you know, would have gone through extreme suffering and pain. And obviously, we're not pain. Ghalib, one of my friends, Ghalib, says that death is never easy. Death is always painful. No one is enjoying when they're gasping for air. No one is enjoying when they're clutching their heart. No one is enjoying when they're being burnt alive or, or falling from a 10-story building or whatever. No one is enjoying that. But these people make it out, yeah. you know, like as though, you know, there's some sort of a divine justice in this. And this is a sign to prove their religion. That's just, and, and, and the lengths to which they go to, to, def, to, to defend their bias. Have a look at this one. One of these posts went viral, uh, uh, well, actually, not this one here, but similar kind of claims are being made. It says, this is the news due to which... The social media was shut down on the ninth night of the fourths, fourth, so that the news of this <laughs> arrogant end and the video uh, video of the screams and shouting could not spread in the world. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just reading that. <laughs> and in the fire, and, and the fire is not extinguished until it burns, and the cries of this accursed person is clearly clearly heard. So these these are the kind of conspiracy theories. So they are even going as far as saying that you, the the internet was shut down, so the world can't see the final screams and cries of this guy being burnt alive, and th these kind of similar claims are being made. That that was the reason. So you know, like there was a Facebook glitch. So 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 Mark Zuckerberg decided that I'm going to lose six billion dollars. <laughs> so you know, the world can't see a video, which. They end up seeing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, 
that's how far they will go. And I looked up this guy. I hate his details. This guy is is an educated Pakistani. He's a bureaucrat. And I was like, wow, that's how far you will go. That so there was a the, 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 how much money was lost by Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, or I, I think Google was down for a little bit as well. So many so many websites went down just so they could hide a video of a blasphemer being burnt alive, which you always ended up seeing anyway. That, that that's yeah. just the people. That's just the people we're dealing with. Um, yeah, it's so, so you know, ridiculous. I just want to say to Muslims that you know just have some common sense have some yeah. common sense and that, and then these people ask us that you know i shouldn't be psychoanalyzing um uh, what's his name pikachu where is he there he is i shouldn't be psychoanalyzing hikikachu i wasn't making fun of anyone's um any one of his family members of his personal tragedy i wasn't making fun of that here he's making fun this guy belongs to some i mean he's someone's father it's personal mm -hmm. to them he's actually making fun of that um, so, you know, we, we're dealing with this atrocious crowd and we need your support, guys. We need your support. Yeah. Also, it, it's really weird because they like sometimes their God is, you know, like clearly an interventionist and causing things like this. And sometimes they need to work on his behalf, like the education board in, in Pakistan. And it's like, make up your mind. Which one is it? Is it like you said, if God is responsible for that? He's also responsible for all the deaths of the every single civilian that's died in a car crash in Pakistan. Um, and the majority, the, in, in most cases, they would be Muslims. So it's, just, it's so weird because it just shows, again, again, I always bang on about this, but this is the problem with dogma. You clutch onto something, you claim that that was not a coincidence, that just didn't happen as a standalone event, that is not just a statistic, that's not a natural um, part of like a societal phenomenon, that was your God in that very moment striking down and showing himself. And then in other times, you need to preserve God's message for him. So only dogma can make you think in these ways that are just not logical and they don't hold up. Um, and then it also has the knock-on effect of completely making you almost desensitized to uh, somebody else's suffering or somebody else's death mm -hmm. uh, whether it's timely or an untimely death the fact is a human life was taken and lost and nobody should ever be celebrating or glorifying that which is yeah uh, and again that's why I, I personally don't rise to these people and what they say or whatever attacks they have because they're doing that the only dogma can produce such hate-induced responses to as such a natural thing as death instead of like having a moment and just realizing that you know wh whether you're muslim or christian or jew or an animist i don't know death is death but only muslims would come out and cheer it because that's how that's that's what their dogma does to them and these are people you're dealing with and i know you always get shocked about like what their what lengths they'd go to but they will go to any lengths because dogma pushes you to any lengths to defend that very ideology it's not open to change it's it's you are on a team and you have to um wave your pom-poms for that for that team for the rest of your life um so yeah that's just the way they are it, it's like a phd academic like dr javad sorry i keep forgetting his last name i can't i can't remember so um uh, he, he he would spend his he, he's been spending he spent like last couple of years saying that Islam doesn't have child marriages or a wife beating or anything or, or those kind of things. But when uh, just to just to defend his dogma, because he can't be an atheist, he can't uh, he can't say that, oh, an atheist made a good point. Um, mm -hmm. He would defend someone like a Kikachu who goes totally against his own version of Islam. That, that's exactly. what dogma does to you. you, you uh, that That's the now what's that Steven Weinberg Weinberg who said that, you know, so it only needs religion for people to to you know come it up with it takes religion for good people to do bad things yeah 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 exactly to help me produce more videos like these support me on patreon or paypal